Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. I go by the name of Box Truck Shorty, and today we're gonna to discuss how much it costs to get started with Amazon going the rental route. Um, it took me about a little over $3,000 to start my second company with Amazon. Um, that included a LLC, my own authority, um, commercial insurance, and the deposit for the rental company. Um, you know, everybody can't afford to go out and buy a truck. You know, you know, everybody say, you know, rent versus, you know, um, buying. Of course, everybody like, yeah, you can make more money with owning a truck, hands down. However, everybody's not in that financial, you know, situation to go out and purchase a truck. Their credit might not have the credit. They might not have the cash. They might not have the capital. They might not also have the, you know, the business sense that, you know, goes with running a business. They don't want to commit to something for such a long time being that they're new to the uh, logistics game. That, of course, that was one of my, you know, things too. When I first started, I didn't know if I wanted to commit to, you know, a five-year truck payment without actually knowing the game. So um, it's uh, simple to get started with the rental company. Of course, you would need your own LLC. You would need your own authority. Uh, authority, you know, the process takes 21 days, no matter where you go, who you go through. However, if you're not familiar with, you know, logistics, I recommend going to a third party company. I don't recommend you trying to do your own, you know, authority, watching YouTube, trying to figure it out. Believe it or not, everybody who I've spoken to pretty much that did their own authority, when they went to go apply for Amazon, they ran into some kind of something. I don't know what it is. I wish I knew. If I knew, that would be another service I could charge for. However, I don't know. So if you're not familiar with, you know, filling out that paper to build 3 c um, all the paperwork that's required to, you know, get your authority, let somebody else handle that. Just like your taxes. If you're not, you know, hey, you can fill out your own taxes, but if you're not good at it, let somebody pay somebody else to do that. You're not saving no money by doing your own LLC. I mean, not your LLC, by doing your own authority. Because in order to get your authority active, you have to pay that insurance on that truck by about seven days before your authority goes active, right? So you don't pay that fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars for that authority, then you didn't do something right. You go apply for Amazon. Now that puts you into a holding pattern for two weeks to a month. Now you didn't pay the whole nother insurance uh, payment versus you could have just went to a third party company like I did to fill out your authority and be smooth sailing. Um, it took me one day to get accepted to Amazon. Literally one day I got my authority. The next day I applied, I was able to get access to Amazon. I started doing loads the next day. However, I've heard a lot of people that's not happening when they go to apply they're getting that minimum uh, do not meet minimum requirements by amazon the little red box okay however i know how to fix that so contact me if you're having that problem um so basically like i said you need an llc you need your own authority um to pull and you would also need you know commercial insurance um a lot of people ask me, you know, that's another, you know, question that I get, you know, frequently in my consultation. What's a good rate for um, commercial insurance? Well, commercial insurance is based off of your driving record and your credit. So it's just like car insurance. It's, you know, it's based off those two things. If you have a bad driving record, your insurance is going to be through the roof. If you have a good driving record and, you know, decent, pretty decent credit, you'll get a fairly, you know, decent rate. I have a good guy that's a, um, a broker. He doesn't work for no company. Um, and actually he can get you pretty good rates. I might actually put his, um, link in the description down below. Um, like I said, he works for, he's a broker, so he can shop everybody, you know, through the, um, the marketplace and get you pretty much a good rate. But let's say an insurance is about 1500. I've heard 1500. I've heard people say 2200. I've seen people say $3,000 a month. So it just depends on your credit and it depends on your, um, in your driving history. The last thing to get started with um, renting is you would have to put a rental deposit down on the truck. The way it works is, let's say for example, you found a truck. You know, it's kind of hard to find trucks. Let's say you found a truck on Friday. You go, they're gonna ask you for like a thousand dollar deposit. The way that thousand dollar deposit, it's not really a deposit, it's kind of like, it goes towards your first week of rental. So if you put the thousand dollars down, it's not like they put the thousand dollars, they hide it to the side and that's a deposit and now you still have to pay for it going forward. That thousand dollars is going for your next week going forward for your truck. So if you put, let's say for example, on Friday, you put a thousand dollars down at one of the rental companies, right? And let's just say that rental is 440. And then let's just say you use 200 miles. So your, your rate will be $600, right? 640 bucks. 
So the following week, they would charge you 640 bucks. They would refund you back the difference of your 240 and then charge you another thousand dollars. So it's like a piggy bank draw that you would have. So let's just say you went over your thousand, then they would just charge you whatever you went over the thousand and then turn around and did a thousand, uh, you know, charge you another thousand. So it's like a, like a draw a piggy bank, if that makes sense. So you always got to have like a thousand dollars going for for the next um, week. So that's pretty much the four things that's required to uh, take the rental route. LLC, your own authority, commercial insurance, and a rental truck. So with that being said, I've had like a couple people, not a couple people, a lot of people kind of pretty much ask me the same question. So I'm, I you know, wrote them a little notes. Um, a couple frequently asked questions that, you know, a lot of my um, people ask me to address, I should say. All right, how long does the whole process take to get up and started? If you start today, uh, the longest part of it is basically the authority is 21 days, it's a protest period. So no matter what, you start off in the beginning, you apply for your authority. Um, a couple days in, four or five days, you'll get your MC, your DOT number. Uh, once you get that, that's when I tell people, you know, it's time to start, you know, insurance shopping. So you're looking at uh, basically about 30 days from start to end to be able to run with Amazon if everything is done correct. If you do it yourself, you miss something. It's a step that a lot of people miss. I know um, that I have to tell them in my consultation, but there's a lot of you know little steps that people miss trying to do it yourself. Um, but it's 30 days is about the time it can take. It can actually be sooner than 30 days. Like me, like I said, the day my authority went active, literally the next day I applied for Amazon and I got approved. I know a couple people the same exact, you know, same, did the same exact thing. So it's about a 30 day process if you did everything right. So if you start now, guess what? You will be right on time for peak season. Peak season, as we know, peak season is around the corner. Same lows that we're booking right now is paying double, okay? Um, a lot of people, I guess, saw a couple of my other videos and said that I'm against renting, I mean, against buying a truck. I'm not against buying a truck at all. Basically, what I'm saying is if you're just starting off in logistics and this is this is something that you don't know or you're not familiar with, why would you go out and go buy a $35,000, $40,000 truck? You never did a load. You don't know how logistics work. You don't know how a load board. You don't have a dispatcher. You have no you know prior knowledge of logistics. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make no... That's like business sense where if you was a chef, would you go out and just go buy a building and, you know what I'm saying, start a business without actually knowing how to cook, knowing how to have a recipe, knowing how to have a menu, having staff. It's just like, you know, a lot of people get blinded by the money that you can make in logistics and they just lose their mind and go out and go buy a truck without no knowledge or how, how the game works, how logistics work. So what I'm saying is I'm not against owning a truck at all. I'm pro buying a truck. If you want, if you buy a truck, I just recommend if you're first starting off, start off with renting a truck. Test it out, see how it works. Guess what? If you like it, it's something you can do. You can keep you know, money coming in. If you can stick around be with Amazon, because as we all know, like I said in a million of my videos, Amazon is cutthroat. If you can stick around doing Amazon or you can get you know, over the road or whatever it is, that's fine. But make sure before you go buy that truck that you have some kind of steady income coming in or some kind of backup plan, especially if you plan to go with Amazon. So I'm, like I said, I'm not against it. I am, however, if you're gonna buy a truck, buy a fairly late model truck. I don't say go out and go buy no old, old truck that has 100, 400,000 miles on it and you're trying to go do 200 miles there, 200 miles back a day. That truck is not gonna last, it's not gonna work, it's gonna leave you on the side of the road. And especially if you're doing Amazon, it's a no-go. If you're doing over the road, I don't know, maybe you can get away with it. So. Um, if you, if you really think about it, um, it, it makes a lot of sense to start off renting. Like I said, once again, I want to state, I am for buying a truck if you know what you're doing, if you got the hang of it, and you have steady income. It doesn't make sense to buy a truck and let the truck sit. I, you'll be surprised how many people I've spoken to or helped a consultant with that went out and purchased the truck before they had a DOT MC number, before they had insurance before they knew anything about Amazon, before they knew anything about over the road and the trucks just sitting. So it makes no sense to do that. So once again, pro renting and I'm pro pro buying. Hey, if you buy a truck, you own a truck, why you can't rent another truck? You can only buy but so many trucks. So let's say you bought a truck. You have one truck that you bought, you own. Okay, you the boss, you the CEO. All right, cool. Guess what? You can only make so much money with that one truck. 
It's just like a barber. You can only cut so many heads in a day, a hairstyle. You can only do so much. Guess what? You gotta learn how to start scaling. Scaling is the name of the game. I'm gonna change the game with that, scaling. You gotta learn how to scale a business. You don't want one barbershop, you want 10 barbershops. You don't want one hairstyle, a hair salon. You want 10. That's the name of the game. There's a difference between being self-employed and owning your own business is a difference. I'll get into that later on. But, you know, like I said, you can scale even if you own a truck. Put a renter in there. I mean, put rent a truck, put a driver in there. Whatever you make is profit. That truck going forward should make enough money to pay for the driver, the fuel, the rental, the insurance. So whatever you made profit, let's just say for giggles, you made $1,500 profit that week off of that truck, renting that truck. Guess what? That's $1,500 a week you would have that you wouldn't make just by running your truck that you own. So $1,500 a week, 3,000 every two weeks, guess what? That adds up six grand a month for just renting a truck that you don't have to pay no maintenance for, okay? Well, you know, a lot of people, you know, gave me a lot of slack about that. Oh, you are paying for the maintenance. Yeah, you paying for it, but same thing when you own a truck, same difference. Um, so another, what's another thing they said? Okay, yes, yeah, so of course, you know, you don't have to own a truck to start with Amazon. That's what I kind of stated in the beginning. You don't have to own a truck. You can take the rental route. That's what I, t I did. Uh, can you profit with a rental truck? Yes, you can profit with a rental truck. If you're paying the right price for the rental truck, if you walk off the street and you're paying eight to $900 base pay for a truck, nah, you ain't gonna pretty much make no money unless you're probably up north somewhere doing loads. Um, if you're getting it for 600 to 650, you're still probably not gonna make a lot of money. But if you're getting it for anywhere from 440 to 450 a week, plus 10 cents, 12 cents a mile, yeah, you can do pretty good um, renting a truck without owning a truck. So yes, you can make a profit. I, I make a profit. So, and then like I said, it's all about scaling. For one truck that you might own, I might have to have two rental trucks to make what somebody that own one truck can make. Well, that's fine with me. I don't have no maintenance. I don't have to worry about that truck break down. I don't have to worry about it. I like that. I like when my money goes into my bank account. It don't leave unless I want it to leave. I like that. Um, let me see, what's another one? Misconception is that you can't make any money with Amazon. You can make money with Amazon. Of course you can make money with Amazon, making money with Amazon. Um, however, if you're not on the early access low board, you probably won't make a lot of money with Amazon. Most of the people that you see in these groups, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, <clears throat> excuse me, that's completely, you know, that's complaining about Amazon don't pay, Amazon don't pay, Amazon don't pay. These people didn't do their homework, they didn't do their research, they messed up, they don't, they, they don't have a lot of whatever it is to be on time. So because if you're not on time and you're not on the early access load board, then guess what? You're not gonna see the good loads. That's anywhere. If you're not on early access, you're not gonna see good loads nowhere. So there's no good loads nowhere if you're not on early access. If you're on early access, there's good loads everywhere. So that's a misconception. If you're on the early access load board, yes. I don't know if y'all are following me on Instagram, but it was a guy, you know, I, I did his consultant. Um, he's in the Philly area, man, he had one load of like, it was all like 200, I don't look at my Instagram, but it was like 200 and something miles. One was paying like 1,200, one was paying 1,500, and I believe the other one was paying 1,000, it was like $5 a mile, $6 a mile. Philly area, Midwest, uh, New York, New Jersey, y'all got some crazy loads. What I've been noticing is just looking at the load board, I've started looking at a, you know, a couple other places. Atlanta has the lowest load rates. To be honest with you, even being on the early access, Atlanta is like, you got the, the lowest trashy loads when I compare it now to when I see, because I used to think 550, you know, 600 was a good load for going 180 to 200 miles. But now I see in Philly, nah, our loads are trash compared to their loads. Same thing with Chicago Midwest area. Our loads are trash compared to those. So. Um, it, it, it's you can make money just depending on where you're at if you're on the early access load board. Um, a lot, another question that I frequently get is, do you need a lift gate on your truck? Amazon states that you're supposed to have a 26 foot box truck with a lift gate. However, I've seen people get away with a 24 box truck with a lift gate. Um, to be honest with you, think about it. I've been in it doing it since January. I probably did now, I think it was like 800 last month. I probably, I could have probably did 900 loads combined with Amazon. Um, and out of those 900 loads, my drivers only had to use their lift gates twice. One time they went to somewhere in Alabama and uh, whatever it was, the dock thing that they used was broken. 
And then it was another time they went to a little small post office in Tennessee that didn't have, I guess, whatever the thing, like I said, whatever the thing is called. And they had to use, you know, the lift gate. Most of my drivers probably don't even know how to use the lift gates. I mean, they know where to get it in training, but it's something that they don't use on a regular, you know, basis. So you can slide and get away with it without a, um, without a lift gate. I mean, that's a pretty good chance. I would, I would, I would risk that chance. Having, if I had a truck with no lift gate, I would take that chance. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, twice out of like 900 loads, I'll take that chance myself too. If I got there and didn't have a lift gate, I'd just be breaking down them boxes and pallets. Um, and, and getting it in the office. Um, another question that they've asked is, do you need a CDL? No, you do not need a CDL. Um, the 26 foot box truck, you know, the 26,000 and below, you do not need a CDL, it's non-CDL. Um, Amazon don't do no background checks. A lot of people are like, oh, well, I have a record, I applied to Amazon. That's different, you're working for Amazon. With this Amazon Relay, you're a subcontractor. So Amazon, there's no background check or anything like that. They don't care what you what you did. They don't care what your drivers did. There's no background check on their drivers. Non-CDO, you can start in the game. Like I said, three to five thousand dollars depends on if you got to put that uh you know second payment down for your um insurance. Um, are any good loads in my area? Like yeah, there's good loads in every area if you're on the early access load board. Someone called the rental company and they stated that you have to be in business for two years. That's a common question that I get. They call around, call to the rental place, and the rental company says, hey, um, oh, you gotta be in business for two years. That's false. There's leasing a truck, and then there's renting a truck. There's two different things. They sound the same. People use the word you know, synonymous or whatever. Renting, leasing, it's different. Renting a truck, you are signing a contract with the rental company week by week you have to make that payment so if it's six hundred dollars four hundred dollars a thousand dollars whatever your rental rate is however much you're paying it's a rent one month at a time they renew the contract every single week leasing a truck is you have a lease you sign it for two three years or however many years you decide to lease the truck for leasing you do have to be in business for two years in order to lease a, um, a truck from Ryder, Penske, um, Enterprise, any of those companies, it's two years. Even if you go to Ideal Lease or a big company, then you have to be in business for two years. I'm gonna say you have to. Majority of the ones I've known, you have to be in the business for two years. So that's a that's a, a I guess a misconception is that you have to be in business. So when you call and you said, hey, I'm looking for a box truck, you're not leasing that truck. You want to rent that truck. So if you say that. You don't have, there's no requirements to, like you have to be in it for two years or nothing like that because hey, I, only, I haven't even been in logistics a year. All the people that I've went through my little uh, starter pack program, they haven't been in business for a year. Um, so that's not true. Uh, what else I want to discuss? Oh, we have a new poster truck feature that just popped up. I think today is, today is my first time actually even seeing it. It's called uh, Minimum Stem Time and Poster Truck. Basically it's stating that a lot of people have been messing up with poster truck where poster truck would book a load and they wasn't able to actually get to the Amazon site in time. So let's say, for example, you have your poster truck from 11 o'clock at night to 9 o'clock in the morning and it's 1 o'clock in the morning and then poster truck book a load for you at 1.30 and you are an hour away from Amazon. There's no way you're going to make it. You're, you're, there's a guarantee late or possibly a rejection. Well, now they have a feature on there where you can put one hour, two hour, I don't know if it was three hours, but how much leeway you need if they book that load, how much time in advance you would need to get to Amazon. So that's a neat feature. I like that feature. I, I really do. So if you're an hour away and you know it's an hour away, let's say you put from 11 to 11 in the morning, after 11 o'clock, if it becomes 12 o'clock, it won't book you a load without giving you an hour notice. I think that's, uh, that's sweet. That was smart on Amazon part. That should really cut down on a lot of the rejections that people get because we know rejections kill scores. It's no, almost impossible to fix. I only fixed a couple. Um, what else we have on here? Your know, peak season's around the corner. You know, peak season's about to start up. So if you start now, you have time to get in before peak season, which is about, you know, next 30 days, we should start seeing loads pick up. Um, oh, another reason why I don't send my drivers, somebody's like, why don't you send my drivers over the road? The reason why I don't send my drivers over the road is because, yeah, you can make a lot more money over the road, but my drivers love being home every day my driver's home daily um that's priceless all the money in the world can't you know compare to somebody who wants to be home every day i like to be home every day i couldn't live on the road it's not for me so my drivers they they might take they might not make as much as somebody else over the road 
but they're home every day. Guess what? I might not make the amount of money if I sent them over the road. I could probably make a lot more money, but I would be running through uh, drivers and it's hard to keep a driver because everybody, you know, want to be home eventually. So unless you're a headhunter, I like, you know, my drivers like to be home. Once again, non-CDL, my drivers like to be home. Um, also, like I said, I'll stay in another video, but there's a difference between self-employed and owning your own business. It's, it's two separate things. Uh, with that being said, that's pretty much the end of my video. I'd like to let y'all know, you know, I still have my starter pack guide. I'm going to always plug myself. I have a starter pack guide, a step-by-step. -step. It's simple. It ain't, it's not a course. It's a simple step-by-step -step guide. Every step I took to get to where I'm at today. Step-by-step-by-step. -by -step -by -step. I made it for people that don't know nothing about logistics like me, who didn't, who didn't come in with, you know, prior knowledge of logistics. And it's very simple to follow step-by-step. I also do 30, 60 minute consultations. Um, you can book it on my link tree, boxtruckshorty.com. You can also pick up my starter pack guide at boxtruckshorty.com. I also have a three day training ride along. Most people mess up with Amazon in their first three days because if you show up to Amazon, even if you don't book my three day course, don't show up to Amazon without being trained. If you show up to Amazon and only give you 40 minutes, I'll probably bet you majority of y'all ain't gonna get out there on time it's very hard to be able to maneuver with amazon because amazon they're not going to teach you anything so like i said i will also a three-day driver training um ride along most people do two days they leave i have a lot of out of towners that come in town and do it it's located by the airport if you want to also you can book that at boxtruckshorty.com um and that's pretty much it so i'll see you guys next time and as like my little slogan says i'll see you at the top all right, out from Box Truck Shorty. Take care.